Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to take today's lesson from the book of John, the 10th chapter. Uh, I'm going to just take a few verses out of there. Uh, verse 24 through 30. As always, I want to encourage people to read that, that entire chapter. Jesus is talking about uh, the shepherd and the flock. He's not talking about me, but he's talking about you. Uh, that he's our shepherd and we're of his flock. And uh, just aside, when I pray here for the church, I don't, uh, I'm pastor here because he's put prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers in the church for the perfecting of the saints. So um, this is his church, okay? And uh, I'm one of the functioning parts of his church uh, for us. So uh, it may not sound like a big uh, deal, but it keeps me on my knees and praying what to preach about, what to say, in these devotions and everything else. So, uh, in this passage of uh, scripture today, I want to share. It's about Jesus attending a feast in Israel. Okay, um, the feast of dedication. There were certain feasts that people were required to be at, uh, and they were yearly feasts. And Jesus was at this when uh, we begin our reading of the scriptures. Verse 24, the Jews gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my father's name speak for me. But you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the Father are one. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Wow, this is pretty heavy duty in some respects. These were his people, the Jewish people. They surrounded him. They asked him a question. Okay. I've been in Bible studies and I've been in prayer meetings and been in services where folks ask questions. Okay? Um, I used to think people asked questions meant they were interested. Uh, they wanted to know something more to further their walk with God. They wanted to know something that was bugging them and they wanted to get over the hurdle. But this kind of null and voids that. These folks were asking him questions that he'd already answered. Okay? He'd already told them. Okay? What was the intention of their questions? Well, you can read on the chapter and find out. They were looking to twist and turn his words. Okay? Uh, when I first came to that realization, it used to bother me when I would see people writing notes when I was speaking or preaching, thinking, what are you doing? Trying to trap me in the words here, you know? Uh, so I don't want to get you paranoid, uh, but just the whole reality is that these Jews, like Jesus was a Jew, that he was born into the Jewish heritage. He was born in Israel, Bethlehem. They already knew the answer. They were asking him a question to set up some kind of conspiracy against him, if you will. By saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? Hey, lay it on me. How come you're keeping it from me? Are you the Messiah? Are you the Christ? Or are you not? Okay. 
and Jesus fired back I did tell you I've already told you that I am that the miracles that I do I can't do in my own I do them in the name of the Father and nobody nobody can snatch those sheep out of my hand I want to jump on to that one but he also says that I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. We as Christians, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, ask him to be the Lord of our lives, the Lord of our heart, the governing force that has us to proceed in this life, that we're going to be with him forever. John in another passage chapter says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life this is not going to end at your death or my death okay? Jesus said it another time in the next chapter I am the resurrection and the light. He that believeth, believe it's a big deal here, he that believeth in me should never perish. Okay? We have life with him. Okay? Don't worry about those who don't believe. Focus on your belief. You know? They saw miracles being done and they believed while this group over here didn't believe and we're asking him again are you the Christ remember Peter when he said thou art the Christ when he said who do you think I am okay. it all boils down to your decision my decision okay. if I thought doing a handstand here or running around the church would get people to believe I do it okay I do it okay belief is something that your will has to surrender to him okay believeth all things in him I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me yeah. I can't outrun a car from here to Mount Vernon but I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that don't believe. Okay? But the preaching of the cross is something that has power to those who believe. Okay? There are signs and symptoms uh, that God shows and reveals to us that has power in them. His word is one. If what he said that I'm the Christ, then he means what he said in answer to those that were in unbelief. But if you don't believe, it doesn't make any difference how many times that Christ could tell you that he's the Messiah. You're just not going to believe. Okay? I believe in healing. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the preaching of God. I believe in the teaching of God. Believe in the laying on of hands and saying the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. All those are not just things that you learn so you can tell others, but those are things that you learn that you can live out in your own life. Okay. It may seem boring, it may seem, it may seem uh, irrelevant, but for we that believe know there's power in God. Okay, We're people of the kingdom. I know we have other loyalties in this earth we're from Ohio or we're a Browns fan Steeler fan <laughs> we lost we lost okay Buckeye fan we lost that doesn't make me a loser okay I'm rooting in the stands what makes me a loser is not believing in God not having a belief in God regardless of those uh, naysayers in life but always look at the glass half empty God is alive God is alive okay. one of my 
favorite songs is that which is a theme for me right now when i take the dog out you know the to my wife i said i've had some of the most moving experiences with that dog walking in that three acres behind our house okay you think i'm crazy now talking about stuff that might make some common sense you really think i'm crazy if i share some of the experiences that I've had recently with God, okay? Recently. And then I, I've i told Sue, you know, we need to get in touch with some of our old Christian friends, see how they're doing, okay? A couple of them popped up at our door from Missouri, okay? We just prayed the game, okay? None, we're staying at the hotel down here. You know how we are. We don't want to stay at the house. We like our independence. That's why I love them. Okay? Not that they they have stayed in parsonages where we we've been, but we've had a journey of faith together. You know, one of my first revivals. He was there taking. I said, "What are you doing? It's driving me nuts. A nervous wreck anyway." My first revival, and you're don't do that. I said, "I love you, man." I love you, okay? The belief in God brings you together with people of all nationalities, all different colors, breeds, you know. When I hear the world say unity, I don't believe it. When I hear the Lord say, I'm a divider of those who believe and unbelief, that's a uniter for me, okay? That's how I look at it, okay? Just as I am, he accepted me. I didn't have to be anything. I didn't have to campaign for anything. I didn't have to yell for anything. He was alive out there, and somebody said, you know, we've been praying for that guy for a long time. Let's, let's pray a little harder. Looks like he's making some progress towards God. Belief is a powerful thing, okay? When you pray, the Bible says, pray and believe it, okay? You believe it. I had some central thought here as I prepared for this message and I have it in bold letters down here to say, okay, Frank, don't forget, this is what you want to zero in on. No one can steal me out of the hand of God. No one can they use steel, they use snatch. Nobody can take you out of the hand of God. You're safe in the hand of God, okay? Remember Simon? He was bragging about he'll stand up for God through the life storms and he wouldn't deny him. And Jesus looked at him and said, Simon, Simon, Satan had to have tempted to devour you he wants to devour you by sifting you through his hands like sand but i pray to the father not gonna happen okay not gonna happen i like the reinforcement here that not only is we're safe in god's hand and no one's going to take us out that we're in the father's hands as well okay they're both the same Three, the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, three in one. It's good to know that as you walk in this lifetime and you witness for the Lord and stand tough in the spirit of the Lord, that God is with you. Okay? I'm not doing my thing. I'm not, I'm not reading some book out of the Chronicles of Narnia that and trying to reenact something. I'm reading of the life-giving God whose plan with the Father was to come to earth in a little manger and to be raised in the faith and to die on the cross for me and you. Okay? This is an inclusive deal. Okay? Whosoever will. Okay? Whosoever will turn to him. It doesn't make any difference I look at that and say, well, God, it doesn't make any difference. Who's in charge? Who's not? You know, my father-in-law, he's gone to be with the Lord now, so I'm not talking about your dad. Said, it doesn't make any difference who's the president, Frank. You work in the CIA, okay? I 
can say that now because uh, he's gone. Okay. Because there's always a few people pulling the strings more than you see. But with Jesus, it's the real deal. It's the real deal. Okay. I might have more faith in some people than others. But it's kind of like I can say as a pastor, I look at the congregation and say, not many of us here. I know why some aren't, why some are. But God's chosen us in Loudonville to spread the gospel. Okay? Us. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. We got more than enough. More than enough. Okay. But we have to believe in God to do it. I, I don't believe in myself sometimes. Do you ever not believe in yourself? Okay. I know when God called me, I said, Well, God, I think I could be more helpful in my role as an iron worker. I could contribute more money to the church. I, why would you want me to be a pastor? I, I know how people are, Lord. I know how they trap you like they trap Jesus and how abusive folks can be. I don't think I can make a difference. The Lord said, don't challenge my authority. I called you. I placed you. Yeah, you're right about some of those things. They will happen in your life. Okay? But they're all for the glory of God because it's about God. I don't want them to see you. I want them to see God in you. Okay? I want you to encourage others to decrease and let God increase in their lives. Boy, oh boy, that's hard to do. We want to hang on to a lot of stuff. Okay? I said, God, will you lift this plague? I'd really like, uh, you know, I'm conversing with people on the phone or internet that are in my hometown outside of Steubenville. I'd like to see them, Lord. And the Lord said, remember this. You're bought with a price, Frank. You are where you are for a reason. Don't be looking over in the other pasture. You focus here. I put you together with your family. You love your family. You've told them you love them. Yeah, Lord, but uh, you know, I think I'm getting on a nerve or two. Okay. Um, and I can't tell the shut-ins that. Well, at least you're not irritating the people. Wake up in the morning and say, Oh, what are we going to do today? Probably go to the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Might get down to the basement today. Okay. I think I'm going out in the garage to go get some gas in the car. Okay. I'll be home shortly. <laughs> Soon I laugh about it because before this happened, I was either going to lodge or I was going to church or going to church meetings, minister meetings. I saw them long enough to shower and change clothes. Uh, maybe pet the dog. And uh, now, I'm there all the time. Okay. I'm there all the time. We've developed an even stronger relationship by being closer together. And so it is with God. You know, you read these stories, you relieve, you you know, I said, well, God, what if I bought into all this stuff that uh, this is my last sermon this Sunday? Is this it? Is this the one you want me to? He said, I'm in control, Frank. I don't have to tell you everything. I don't have to check in with you, even. You preach this one. This is important that people know that believing me counts for something. Okay? Counts. Big time. You're going to be, they're going to be with me. And then nobody, nobody can take them out of what they believe in God. Nobody. There might be some shaking. There may be some pounding. But you're safe and secure in the hand of God. Man, God. I hope I got that one across. I, I believe in God. I really believe it. And I hope that I sold it the way you want me to, God. And he says, stay faithful, Frank.
when he comes back again, is he going to find faith in our hearts? Is he going to find our belief in him when he comes back? That might be enough to hold all of us right there. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercy. Oh God, your mercy. Thank you. We praise you, O oh Lord, for your spirit. We pray you'll continue to instill your spirit in us. Help us, Lord, in our unbelief to believe. Help us to hold fast to our faith, be confident and steady, and to be encouraging to other people. We give you this, your church, First Baptist, Loudonville, and the audience, whoever's listening, oh God, reach them in their home, their churches. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.